Happy New Year 2021. Welcome to a special edition of the Left Coast Leafs podcast. I'm Trevor Bast, joined by my son, Reggie. Sean Orr. Hello. MIA. Somewhere, actually literally somewhere in Northern Ontario. We don't know. Yeah. He uh, he had a chance to hop on. Didn't get the message. Uh, He's probably having fun. Uh, in the snow and ice and skating and skiing and who knows what he's doing, but hey, Sean, we miss you, buddy. And uh, this is uh, this is this cool podcast. This is more about the beer than the hockey. This is a kind of a beer centric episode is. here. We have been consuming a lot of World Juniors, and we're pumped for tomorrow the quarterfinals. Yeah, so that's that's cool. But the reason that we're here, oh, first a point of clarification. So. I thought about this today when you were out earlier, Reg. So yeah. you're you're my son. I am. I don't want to make it awkward on the podcast and like have you call me dad, but you can't disrespect me and call me Trevor in front of my audience. <laughs> so I'm thinking like maybe emperor or, oh or governor. I don't know. <laughs> I'll just I'll just say you, you know, you know hey. whatever your pronouns are. T dog. Yeah. How's T the T Dog? No sure. more awkward? Yeah, Did I just make it more awkward? That's worse. <laughs> All right. So the reason we're here is I chose my beer of the year for the podcast a couple of weeks ago and I chose the Russell Cream Ale. Really solid beer. Had Drank it on tap at Fifth Street Pub, one of our sponsors in the past. Purchased it at Liquor Planet. Loved it. And so I I posted on Instagram, did a little tagging of of Russell. Yep. And then they got back to me and said, hey, we appreciate the shout out and we're glad you love the beer. I started interacting with them a bit. And they said, hey, um, we could hook you up with our island rep, Jay, and he can give you some samples. So I thought samples you know like costco you get a little <laughs> a quarter piece of bread with with some hummus on it or something like that yeah so i meet jay at their at their palatial warehouse in an industrial area of uh victoria and he, he gives me six four packs of tall cans of six different varieties of beer that's a lot of beer it's a lot of beer it was, it was, yeah we've been drinking it all christmas we, week here we have been and, and because of this stupid uh, COVID-19 and I, th- that's a thing that I would love to just share with friends and yeah. you could take some to your buddy's houses big craft beer guys but we've been having these beers to ourselves so I thought what can we do what can we have some how can we have some fun with these beers so we're gonna take all six we're gonna split a tall can each and we're gonna just drink each one yeah and yeah, it's like and, six yeah plus plus two non wrestle beers tell us about those yeah, so those are beers I, I brought back, um, kind of flouting the Canadian customs laws. I just moved back to Victoria from spending a few months in Germany um, yeah. on December 10th as to leave quarantine for Christmas. And I brought with me these two beers from a local brewery in the city I was living in called Zabrücken and uh, nice. Brook. Brewing company, it's been around since, what does it say here? 1702, yeah. so substantially older than Canada itself. Um, an ancient brewing practice, you could say. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I brought these back for my dad to try, um, perhaps on the podcast, and then this whole now here we are Russell concept came up. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. So we're going we're gonna to have... Well, basically three tall cans each and half a good German beer each. Yep. So um, I think we, we're going to talk through the whole thing, but I think we should just talk with the beer. Yeah, so I think you, let's, I, let's get I give you uh, the, the control over the rhyme and reason and the order to which we drink them. So how did you how did you arrange these? Oh, um, I, I took the lighter ones and the darker ones. And All right. And I put them in buckets. Let's <laughs> do it. Let's do it. So I guess we could start with the beer that began... This whole venture, yes. The Left Coast Leafs, well, Trevor's Left Coast Trevor's Leafs beer of the year, um, twenty twenty beer of the year, a good year for beer. Um, 
We drank a fuck ton of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the early days of quarantine? Oh, God. You were making regular weekly runs of curbside pickup. Yeah, we'd spend like hundreds of dollars a week at Category 12 <laughs> and Phillips. And... Yeah. It was uh, the curbside pickup was a, a godsend while everything was actually shut down. Yeah, we uh, we took advantage of that system. Is that even? That's pretty even. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's good. Even. So this is a cream ale, and so this is Russell's flagship beer. They've they've been making this particular beer since they opened up in 1995 in Surrey. So that's this is the one that they started with it's what made them a brewery and everything else has come after and lo and behold it still it stands up today that was like long before the craft beer days well, should be cheers i suppose yeah i guess yeah. cheers we're drinking them out of a uh, yellow dog cup yellow dog um yellow dog brewing if company you aren't familiar with the west coast craft scene is out of port moody kind of vancouver area and is right next door to Twin Sales. Yes, there's a little row of breweries. Yeah, breweries. And I don't. I mean, the nice thing about craft beer people is, like, it's it's very collaborative. And yeah. like, no one, no one. I mean, I'm, I'm sure they're competitive and they want to do well, right? And but they are. They they collaborate well. They support each other. They do they do great things together. I you know, and I I kind of see that as like, I'm not a wine guy, right? No, but I, I'm like, I'm kind of like, if there was like two wineries and, and one was down the road, the one guy would say like, fuck those guys. Like, you know, like I'm going to sabotage, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sabotage, you know that for sure. <laughs> I, I'm going to sabotage their, uh, their vineyard with like a, like locusts or something like I, that. I, I, and, feel, uh, I feel like some person in the wine community is going to, is going to come after you for saying that. <laughs> well, Wyatt from Liquor Planet is a sommelier. So he may he may be able to correct me on that. Yeah. And I, if I have to if I have to submit a retraction, and and a risk being canceled. Yeah. I'd be happy to do it. If I'm wrong, I'll admit I'm wrong. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I, I I guess I could see it being more likely that there's um, some kind of competitive nature. Yes. In the wine yeah. world. But no, yeah, craft beer. Um, it reminds me actually of a, of a yellow dog story where. I was um, touring with a band, and we were playing a show in Prince Rupert. Hmm. A lovely city, actually. I love Prince Rupert. Never been there, but I've been close. It's, uh, it's a nice place to be close to as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but... Terrace, to be precise. Okay, yeah. yeah. We, I've, I've done, done that, too. And, done and that we, were, too, yeah. we were playing inside of the craft brewery. I wish I remember the name of it. It's hmm. really good. I, I don't know that there's a whole lot of craft breweries in Prince Rupert. but Right. We... Pardon me. We, the whole band tried all the beers and we yep. kind of decided there was this IPA that we liked the best. And after talking to the people that worked there and uh, made the beers and everything, we found out that that IPA was actually a collaboration with Yellow Dog. Oh, no kidding. And like all the way, like 20 hour drive away from Vancouver, but these right. breweries are still. Was it Wheelhouse Brewing Company? I believe it was Wheelhouse. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And yeah. a funny kind of. Easter egg. I don't know if, if this is why they did it, but there was this really old kind of fat golden retriever lounging around the brewery. So maybe they're ah. in some kind of because Yellow Dog's a, a little golden. shout out to the Yellow Dog Golden. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. So yeah, maybe maybe that's why they they're in some kind of craft beer ownership. That's cool. Golden Retriever group on Facebook or something. I, I like I like the I like the collaborations they do with um, coffee companies and that sort of yeah. thing too. Like. I love a good coffee stout or espresso stout, that sort of thing. Yeah. I remember our, our, our now defunct brewery down the road probably did the best one that I ever had. Is that? Do we have that? I don't think it was ever a podcast beer. I don't think it's on the wall. No. Damn. That was yeah. a fantastical coffee. I remember we, bought up the, barrel. we went and bought up the rest of them. We did. Yeah. yeah. When yeah. they closed. Yeah. yeah. We had about like, uh, we got four or six of their bombers before they closed down. So we're, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to have a bit of a clip on these beers there eh? we yeah yeah them, we can chase them back pretty fast maybe like five minutes of beer and we'll but we're like, yeah we go ahead oh yeah yeah we, we kind of have to i guess give give some kind of report on on the beer yeah like and, and we can we can honestly we can take as much time as we want this yeah. is just bonus content 
So I don't know. We don't have to slam all these beers in 20 minutes, which is our usual target. That might be good content, though. <laughs> good content. <laughs> the last five would be very good. But we should make a disclaimer. I am, like, I'm not a, as people that know the podcast, I, I don't have a gigantic craft beer vernacular. I like it. I like trying new things. That was, you picked a lot of big words to describe how you didn't have any big words. You know, gigantic vernacular. Right? Your, yeah. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I have my moments. And <laughs> as, as people who know me know, they, they come few and far between, but I have my moments. But you, on the other hand, you, you were a bit more of, more of a taste for it. Yeah. And, uh, but we're, we're not going to sit here tonight, though, and, and talk about, like, Meeting the uh, the farmer who grew the hops for this beer and and uh, and you know and how many children he has and what his cow's name is. Yeah. But we're gonna kind of just say like how this how we this would relate to an everyday experience we would have if we wanted to have this beer. Right. Right. Like where where we would drink it, how many we'd have. Is it a get drunk beer? Is it a you know? What I mean? So we'll just give give our beers that sort yeah. of rating. Yeah. Yeah. So you go ahead. You want to go ahead on the cream ale? Yeah. I mean cream ale, it's. It's a thick beer. Like, yep. it's not like a, a Pilsner or something like that. Mm. It has, it's rich. Like, it's it's dark brown, and it tastes like it's dark brown. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. but that said, there's nothing like, I don't know. You know, you know when you're a little kid and you would have a sip of your dad's beer and mm-hmm. it would taste like hell? and Molson Canadian yeah and and sometimes you drink a beer and you can still just kind of taste like oh yeah like this is a this is a beer you know? yeah this has not, none of that going on this is yeah. it's only it's only good kind of sweet flavors yeah I feel like I would drink three of these and then I would have to think long and hard about number four right maybe switch to gin or something like that or yeah PBR, or just just another kind of beer an IPA or mm-hmm. A lager yeah. or something else, but yeah, I I'd I'd love one of these. I like I'd probably take I'd love one on tap. I'd love one on tap with a burger or something like that. Yeah, I'd be a nice be a nice side dish. It's for, a good burger beer. It would be a really good burger beer, and uh, but I bet you I bet you back in 1995 this knocked the socks off of some people. Oh, this is blowing minds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so was... like it probably pissed a lot of people off, and it probably made a lot of people happy. Yeah, right at the same time. Yeah, it's it's not. It's it's not any different than a beer that some brewery would release tomorrow. Right. Yeah. 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 It's it's a it's a common recipe today, but back in '95, um, yeah, it was uh, it was transformative. Yeah. Another big word. Yeah, that's a good right. word. You that's gotta yeah, you gotta pull them out. <laughs> Trevor the Thesaurus, I can call you maybe. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> TT Trevor Thesaurus. Thesaurus. <laughs> but so let's not bury the lead on this entire podcast. The reason I wanted to go on YouTube is because I got my fucking retro, reverse retro jersey for Christmas from my lovely wife. Yes. And uh, maybe I threw a hint in there at some point in early December when I saw the link that they were actually on sale. Yeah. But uh, for those who've asked me on Instagram and that, uh, what's the, what name and number am I going to get? No, nothing yet. Um, I'm. I, I will put the Conn Smythe Trophy winners name on this sweater when they win a Stanley Cup. Other than that, it's going nameless. You gotta you gotta earn it. You gotta earn your you gotta earn my number. If if the Leafs win the cup. Yep. And they give the Conn Smythe trophy to Connor McDavid instead because he scored 150 <laughs> goals in the playoffs. In a losing cause. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, the, there has been a losing would goalie. You, would you get Connor McDavid's number? I'm standing the, up here right now after only half a beer, and I'm saying yes. You will get the I will get winner. McDavid on my <laughs> reverse retro. Boy, you trapped me there, man. You got me. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I said it. I've said it. It's on It's on the record. Well, yeah. It's until we post this, it's not on the record, but I plan on posting this. Yeah, and I'm, I hold <laughs> you to it, even things, if you don't. Even unless things go don't. horribly wrong, we're <laughs> not. We're gonna post this. <laughs> okay, well, I think are you? Yeah, are you I'm done good. Here? I'm ready. And as as true craft beer people, we're not using the same glass for no. every every beer. We have a no, uh, no. a secret stash of clean glasses that we're gonna go to. So you want me to pick? Can I pick the next beer? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I think we we're gonna go light to dark. So pick a beer. Yes, from, out of that, from, out from of that, that bucket. Yeah, out of that bucket. All right. So, um, one thing that I haven't tried of theirs is the um, East Coast 
Northwest. Uh, the Northwest IPA. You've said something. I've had, I've had you've the East Coast. Every time you've referred to that beer, you've said a different combination of of <laughs> Northwest, South, you know, Northeast IPA. Mid, the Midwest uh, <laughs> uh, uh, bread basket uh, IPA. So this this is the Punch Bowl Northwest IPA. It's six point five percent. So it's a it's a kicker. Yeah, it's got a bit of a kick in it. I have had their other directional IPA. I don't, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't remember the name of it. Was it also but, named uh, after one of Kanye West's children? <laughs> <laughs> he, yeah, no, it was. It was Frank Zappa's. Uh, it was called oh, it the, was moon, the Moon. The Moon, moon unit. unit IPA. Yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> I don't know when you want to break out our uh, excuse me, our seven ounce whistle boy sampler glasses. But later in the podcast, yeah, you know what? Um, they're kind of not in the frame here. They're not in the frame. No, they that, made that's, it. Out. That's a shame that they're not in the frame. Yeah, um, but if we pull them back a bit, they'd be in the frame. Yeah, true. We'll move them, them on back. The right things. Yeah. So these, this is a these were a Christmas gift to me from from uh, from T Dog here. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are seven ounce tasting glasses from Whistleboy Brewing Company, which is one of the fresher faces in the Victoria craft beer scene. Maybe a couple years old now. Yeah, and uh, they're operating out of Market Square. It's like this old square that they used to hang people in. I think. And, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I would have called it the Hangman Brewing Company, but uh, that's just me. <laughs> yeah, and um, there you go. So it's from this. This is really cool. It's in this like old, ancient, you know, not ancient, eighteen um, hundreds brick, brick square with kind of this like two layer concourse. Um, on all of the buildings going around it, kind of patios up above, and then it's down on the bottom and tables in the square. It's, it's really yeah. nice. Yeah, I would, I would, regardless of what you think of their beer, and I like it a lot. They're great guys and girls that work down there, and it's the coolest place in Victoria to have a beer. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. We see, you see your hip friends when you go great, to Whistle. Great ambiance. Yeah. Yeah. When you were away, I saw your bandmate Aura yeah. down yeah. there and with, I, her, with I her dog, that. and you can take your dog on the patio. And there's a lot of restaurants in the area, and you can order. You can order right to the patio from any place that you want in the area, which is really cool. Oh yeah, yeah, we got a a pizza. We did. That was our first Formosa. That was our first um, kind of post eat, for, eat, post COVID post first lockdown post first lockdown. Um, yeah, eat out, drink out experience. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was good. That was a good time. Yeah. Cheers on the. Uh, Northwest. North e. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what? Should we, should we be reading the, the cans? Yeah, yeah, can you give it a read? Yeah, I feel like we, we, we can accept that we didn't read the cream mail because that's already been read yeah, on the yeah, podcast. Uh, you yeah. should all remember that. There will be a yeah. quiz. Check our last episode. A non-traditional West Coast IPA brewed with wheat and honey malt with a large whirlpool and dry hop additions of Citra, Mosaic, Ella, an amarillo, hmm. light in color with big notes of passion fruit, mango, and grapefruit. See, that's those last three words. That you, those could have been the only three words there: passion fruit, mango, grapefruit. Right. I know what that is. I don't know what an a mosaic Ella and amarillo is. I'm a, I'm a little upset because back when I in my first ever essay in school was done on uh, an amarillo. And I'm 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 upset that they're using them in beer. No, wait, that was armadillo. <laughs> I, I had to I had to do a write up on on, on an armadillo. So uh, I at, a, at an early age I I knew everything you had to know about an armadillo. But uh, I'm, I'm glad yeah. I got that wrong. And they're not using armadillo. Yeah, they're not using in craft ar- beer. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so now this is a crowded category. Like the IPA category oh, yeah, it's, is the it's, it's everybody's flagship almost is a is an IPA, and our our boy Sean, he's he's a big IPA guy. Yeah, it's almost to the point big. where it's it seemed to have ruined the beer the, segment the, the, on the podcast. No, not not the beer segment, but just not ruined. But mm-hmm. it, every every time he it, he's trying to craft beer, yeah. It's almost. It would be better were it an IPA. Yes, exactly. Yeah. No, he ha- he has a he has a t- he has a palate for it. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. And and it became actually kind of a fun little. It has become a fun little um, uh, bit on the podcast where like why I think why it almost trolls Sean sometimes. Yeah. 
by uh, by giving him beers that he knows Sean won't like, and at least we blame Wyatt for doing that. Anyways, I'm not. But sure. sometimes he throws you a bone and gives you a really nice oh, yeah. IPA. Yeah, he like, does. Uh... So we've uh, we've we've done 100 and, 115 official episodes and probably like twenty five to thirty co- sort of like unnamed or pop up or special episodes. So we're probably over one hundred and fifty episodes, probably one hundred and ten or twenty that have had beer with them. So. Yeah. You know, we've we've gone we've ripped through a lot of craft beer in, in in the three years of the podcast. It's been a yeah. We were kind of admiring the wall. Maybe you have to post an updated wall picture. For I, the, I will. Uh, yeah, Instagram. I'm it's trying to while. organize it. It's crowded. It's a crowded wall right now. Yeah. So there's, um, there was a harmony. We could we can figure it out. Yeah, yeah. We, we have to, uh, we have to add a shelf. Obviously, that's that's the uh, that's the key right there is adding yeah. a shelf. Yeah, and uh, what's the um, so this. What's, I'm into this beer. It is a very drinkable yeah, beer. Yeah. Yeah. This is... Yeah. Yeah. Like speaking of patios, like I could I could find myself easily on my fourth one of these on a patio yes. on a hot this day. This is this is one where I drink six. Yeah. And then I'm like, what the fuck did I do that for? You know, like <laughs> I should have just drank it, you know, three of these and three glasses of water. It's yeah. hot. I'm out in the patio. Yeah. I'm thirsty, so they're going back quick. Yeah. Yeah. You know what the crazy thing about craft beer is? Like, we all have our loyalties to certain things that we consume, whether it's electronics or food. Man, craft beer, I just can't stop sampling different things. Like, sometimes yeah. I feel guilty that I'm not, you know, like buying my favorite one all the time, but I walk into a, a BC liquor store. Um, and I, I just, I kind of, I have to scan for like ten minutes before I actually settle on something yes. for that night. It's 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 kind of it's it's so fun. It's I feel like the the, the pandemic has really is not interfaced well with how I buy beer, right? Because I kind of you know I feel this. You're a browser. Yeah, you feel this kind of duty to get in and out, and there's kind of people don't want to just slipping in front of you while you're looking at the fridge you almost people kind of wait their turn to come up and yeah get the beer while you're there so but i think it's been good it, it's forced me to try things that i maybe would mull over and then not end up trying mm-hmm. because of that yeah 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 because back in the early curbside pickup days you just kind of have to pick one or two and and get a big order because we wanted to you know they reduce our contacts and just get all yeah. our beer in one place. And, and it's nice that we're able to go out there and just get, get a little bit more something now. Yeah. Yeah. You can kind of check out the, the beer wall. Yeah. 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 So what's, uh, what's you said, you didn't you say, you no you said you found a, uh, just randomly found a Steamworks beer in Germany, but it wasn't an IPA. It was, it was the, the cucumber. killer cucumber ale. Yeah. 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 It's, uh, it was kind of this, this bougie um, grocery store kind of department story. It's like if the bay had a Whole Foods inside of it. Is the best way I could describe this place. Wow, it's yeah. called Karstadt, and um, really nice seafood deli in there and everything. It was good, and yeah, they had it was like three euro for a bottle, which like a normal I don't yeah. know three fifty five bottle or whatever. So. I only got it once. It's like a taste from home kind of mm-hmm. thing. But yeah, that must have that must have tasted pretty familiar. Like this beer is like I can't wait less to than, try less those. than a, you know you can get that for less than a euro at a, a corner store. Oh, is that right? So, eh? Yeah, that's I, can't, like, I, I can't believe they lasted this long in our fridge. You've been home since the twenty fourth. Well, they've been they sat in my since fridge in quarantine since the tenth, <laughs> and I every time I opened the fridge, I looked at them. And I was like, ah. Yeah, I know because yeah. you were you were you were not consuming during your twenty four hour or fourteen day quarantine period. No, I decided was, to dry I out. I was drying out, drying up. For those who don't know, Reggie was in Germany with uh, our other son, yeah, my brother, brother, who's there going to school. So he uh, he he found a window of opportunity when travel was allowed, and uh, the window closed not too long after he got there. Yeah, in in the summer when the the cases were extremely kind of low in Canada for a few months there. Mm-hmm. Germany and the EU was letting people from Canada come in. Yeah. And uh, I hadn't seen, no one, none of us had seen Des in a year. So I took off and 
spent as long as I could spend there without getting a visa. And, yeah, uh, you did the, the three month, uh, the ninety day kind of thing or whatever. Yeah, and, uh, but no, it was great, and uh, it's a little bit, you know, by the time I had to travel, it was like, oh, I really don't want to fly as much as I felt like flying back when there was, you know, right, way less of a chance someone had a case. Like I was, I yeah. came back from Germany. Pretty much the exact same time that the hockey team came back and yeah, then yeah, tested right. for had their eight cases, eight or whatever. cases, and that could have easily been me. Yeah, one of my my plane from Vancouver to Victoria got flagged later by the CDC or whatever, and that's a that and was... speaking of those German players, like they got pumped early in the tournament, kept getting players back, and now they actually made the quarterfinals. Yeah, so they did for uh, the first time in in a ages right yes yeah. yeah and so what what a story that is and uh of course they have the they have the the uh third overall pick in the draft the young stud the stutzel kid who seems to be the ottawa the, yeah seems to be following in the footsteps of of leon dreisaitl a little bit and, yeah uh, hopefully i mean if you if he became that player ottawa like fuck I don't want that to happen. No. I, do not, I do not need no, you Stutzel know what, to become to become Leon Dreisaitl in our division. You don't want the Battle of Ontario to be shit, though. I miss that. You're right. Like, you know, the, like back in the Heatley, early 2000s. Like Heatley, Alfredson yeah. versus like Sundin's Leafs, and those were great. Those those were good games. The great thing about those were like Ottawa always owned. Toronto in the regular season and the Leafs always beat them in the playoffs. And yeah. It was such it was such good revenge. And now the Leafs are kind of wearing that playoff choker mask with uh, Boston right now and hopefully they yeah. hopefully they can shake it. I, I'm so pumped for NHL hockey coming back. Like, yeah. The Canadian division is just going to be like it's going to be it's like a playoff game every night I think. Like it's going to be weird and the, and the trash yeah. talk between the Canadian fan bases is going to be out of control. Yeah, the uh, the interprovincial tensions in Alberta and Ontario are going to be hot. What's gonna what What is Game Ten between Calgary and Edmonton going to look like? Like, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, it looks like an NHL game from two thousand and one. <laughs> My God, <laughs> like, that's crazy. Yeah, that's gonna be something. That's gonna be something. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I feel like. It would be interesting to look at the um, per capita injuries in mm-hmm. the Canadian division versus the yeah. American. Because I feel like the American division is it might look like the you know the DEL compared to yeah the Canadian yeah really division. like the Matthew Kachuk and Zach Cassian are just it's that's going to be that's going to blow up in game one. Yeah, like, and they're gonna have they're gonna be playing back to backs and three and three and four nights, and I'm I'm very excited for that. Yeah, so you're this is gonna be a challenge for you because you are a you're a beer nurser. I am, but I can also I can rise to the call of duty. Oh yeah, you you can. Yeah, and there's you have you have an interesting now that you're back home and I'm and we're cleaning up a lot of cans <laughs> over the Christmas season. You have an interesting beer routine where you never drink the last sip. No, I, I'm I'm anti last about sip. that, Reggie. Like it's it's not. You no, know, it's not like I'm I'm leaving like. The 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 very the very shittiest rim on the bottom of the cup. Like, so it's, it's, not, it's nothing that I did as a parent. No, no, it's it's good <laughs> taste. I think it's you know I'm yeah. leaving like the, this fraction of liquid. So that. I don't know. I feel like people drink that in vain. It's like I paid for it. I'm, I'm well, drinking it. It's like when you're drunk and you buy like three cheeseburgers at McDonald's and yeah. you have like one and a half and you're like, oh, fuck this. But you, you just keep going because you bought them. It's 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 the worst sip. It's not carbonated. It's half saliva. Yeah. It's it's beer backwash. Well, I was going to say, if you if you actually did a forensic workup of the last sip of a can of beer yeah what is what is how much dna how much of your dna oh, yeah. versus beer is in that uh is in that enough uh, that beer. enough that i don't feel like fucking with it I yes guess. yeah <laughs> so this I, I i love the name of this beer i love the i love the logo it's got a it's got a uh a sectioned off pig 
uh, with his numbers and a cleaver over top of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's certainly um, an in, a great piece of artwork, and it is the uh, the Blood Alley ESB. Now, I believe Blood Alley is a location in Vancouver. Okay. Yeah, but it, but it's it's I just know this because my friend has a friend they tag a lot on Instagram. They're a barber. And it's like the Blood, oh, Al- Blood okay. Alley Barber or something like that is their name. So I, I, and, and I there's no description on this beer. Believe it's a location. Yeah, yeah okay. There's, there's no description on this beer. It's an ESB. Um, I get, I, do you want me to find something online about it? Um, I don't... Oh, you know what? There's there's a little thing. It says balanced, rich, roasted malt flavors. Okay. ESB stands for extra special bitter. Yeah. I don't know what makes yeah. it extra special, but... Yeah, um, We'll, uh, we'll, Vancouver. we'll tell we'll we'll be the ones that determine what makes it extra special in about five minutes. Yes, exactly. Vancouver <laughs> seems to be bigger on ESBs than Victoria for yeah. some reason. I, I never really see Victoria breweries doing ESBs. Right. But for some reason there's a demand for them in Van. Thank you. These are these are going into our branded uh, Left Coast Leafs podcast beer glasses. Something that I had made up with all the intentions of offering to listeners. I've given some away locally, but yeah. I just wasn't comfortable putting them in the mail and having them arrive broken and that sort of thing. I didn't want to uh, take people's money and then have broken glasses arriving and having to deal with that. So They're good glasses, though, and I, I hope that are. one day you can figure out the right... I do because people do like our material. merchandise. Like people, yeah, you I, got this, this I, toque I, I, here as well, Left Coast Leafs. Yeah, that's our that's our first um, generation of toques. We've sent out the second already, which didn't even make it. Which thank you everyone who like it. It didn't even make it to market. They just, I just messaged a few people back in like when they became available with masks, and they all sold out in a mo- in one morning of just messaging people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you give it a shot. You give it your best shot, Red. Gave it my best. And uh, so hopefully, you know, hopefully I can get the the um, the new ones into the online store. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm just I'm totally flattered about how people sort of have taken to our brand and our logo. And a big shout out to my other son in Germany, Des, who did uh, design the logo, which I think I think the logo people like it. Like if it just said Left Coast Leaves Podcast in in like a generic font, people wouldn't buy our people stuff. People wouldn't want it, no. It's a cool logo. No, it and, is a cool logo. I wear this toque a lot. And yeah, and it's I, worth I noting. cool. Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> and it's worth noting that uh, the intro music you just heard and you hear every episode, Reg created that. After like episode... Two, I think. Two, when you said... And you your first need, episode, I'm like, you guys gotta you have guys some suck. kind you of guys suck. chill, jazzy, kind of loungy yeah. intro. So yeah. I think cheers it took... on the ESB. Cheers. Yes. Yeah, so, so you yeah, put that I together. Mocked it up in about... I think two hours it, it and I've never had I've never had a single moment. Oh, that's a nice beer. That is it's not I, too bitter. I, it's one of my. I think it might actually be with a the sleeper of Russell's really hey? lineup. Yeah, I've never had a moment where I've kind of come to you or wanted to come to you and say, you know, Reg, maybe we need to change up the intro music. I, yeah, I just, it's our it's our thing. It's like you know, like you right now you're you're going down a mash rabbit hole. It's like. The mash intro is mash, right? You know what like though? You don't change I, it. I take it issue oh. with they re-recorded it for season four, I think. Oh, and hmm. it, it was a bit different. It's just a little bit more hi-fi and hmm. more of an arrangement. It's not as guitar-centered. Mash kind of fucked up the intro after season three. Maybe Dolby became a thing. And funny, <laughs> true. <laughs> funny enough. Season three or four, and this is a way less popular show, and way less cool to claim that I watch. But yeah, Reba really fucked her intro up. <laughs> you too. are a Reba watcher. I watch. Like, that's Re- I like Reba. It's I like sitcoms. Kind not not ironically, not even an ironic mm-hmm. like. Um, yeah, Reba. The writing is is pretty bad, a lot of the time, but. It's just a chill character comedy. Good characters, yeah. At least good characters. And, yep. Yeah. Shout out to Reba. <laughs> Reba, <laughs> she's a good art. She's a good recording artist. She has some good music. She does have some good music. Yeah, yeah I gotta, I gotta give her that. All the voice. I have to give her that. So, let's let's put this uh, let's put this beer into a real world scenario. I could drink a lot of this beer. Could you drink a lot of this beer? Yeah, this is the yeah. sort of heaviness that I I can just 
put right down. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, even though it's not an IPA, would you, would you, um, would you consider it close to an IPA? Yeah, I think almost that, close to a fat tug bitterness. Yeah, almost? it's it's well, yeah, it definitely has that that bitter. Yeah. I don't I don't know what an ESB is necessarily, other than what it's called. Yes, you know? yeah, like, yeah. I, and I know the what makes an IPA an IPA, or mm-hmm. you know, what makes a stout a stout. But I, it's it's hoppy, it's bitter, but not like bitter like it's dry it's not like bitter like a red wine right or coffee or something like yeah that. it's like yeah yeah I, I that's that's a multiple that's a multiple drink beer for me like if i went and if i saw if i went to like the 365 tap house and and 320 328 tap think, house yeah and they had that one on the board and i just threw a dart at it and i got it i'd get a second one i wouldn't go yeah. i wouldn't go to the board again I would say that's a nice beer, and I'm gonna I'm gonna hunker down on it. Yeah, I think that it, it, I would really have to push myself to feel bad drinking yeah. this beer. And a nice thing about this too is it's you know, if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, you can kind of see it's it's not light, but it's not dark. It's like right in the middle. Mm-hmm. It's like the same color as like a slim and honey brown or something like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, it is. You're right. It is a kind of a real dark amber. and much like that honey brown actually. I could I could sit in a log cabin in the forest on a snowy December day mm-hmm. in front of a fire and be drinking this and feel cozy like I'm yes. drinking a porter yeah. or like a really dark beer. I agree. But I could also take this down to the beach in the summer and sit back on a log and take in some sun and crack it and drink it and it would fit both of those scenarios. It's, yep. It feels like a really flexible beer. I agree. Like that that um the northwest ipa i i've been reluctant we we have we have the privilege of having a hot tub yes and it's, it's we very do. nice in the summer in the yeah. winter here and i've been reluctant to take that one out into the hot tub because okay. it's just that's not a summer activity that feels like a summery beer like. okay i see yeah good yeah, that's a good point yeah you have to be more specific about your, about your hot tub beer you do right stouts Yes. Really nice. What's yeah. that Nordic ale or something from Fieldhouse? We have a bottle of it in the fridge. Right oh now. yeah, the Nordic Cocao. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. a hot tub beer. Yeah, I had to buy those when you were gone because it's a limited edition, and I wanted to have some nice ones waiting for you when you get back. And nice. it did not disappoint. No, no, that was it. Did not disappoint. I think it, we... it might be, it might be on the beer wall, Reg. Like, I th- I think we might have I had that don't... one. Don't think that why no? it would give that's like those are ten dollar bombers mm. so i don't see why giving you guys why field it house. does like us he we does have, we've, we've had but... field house cans before we do there is field house on the wall okay yeah yeah I and just, we're, it's, I, it's... we're not gonna walk over there and look right now see, I, just, but, I don't uh, usually see you guys getting but like... there's an entire row of bombers that are hidden back there so yeah but the field house you can see it, it has its own they have their own like the bottles have, almost like the, a, the, no the bottles have like writing on them and they're and they're squared off at the top as opposed to rounded i don't think you at, at the neck no okay cans is there any cans of field that's up there i've never seen a field house tall can you know what this would be a good time to um to announce before or to tease before people tune us out <laughs> <laughs> that um Russell has actually generously um, uh, agreed to facilitate a contest with us. That's true. And so, um, in February, yes, and also just on that note, yeah. on your on your notes, I'll add another note mm-hmm. that this this noted this this podcast is not endorsed by Russell. No views expressed are our own. <laughs> they are. <laughs> and, yeah. They this, gave us these beers, and we yeah. wanted to make a podcast about it. Not a paid promotion. No, so don't no. go suing. Don't don't cancel Russell. Cancel yeah. the last co- left coast leaves. But here. we will also add to that that we are for sale. They, yeah, absolutely. We can be bought. Right. Like yeah. We will say we will read a script for you if you provide us one. I would say we are for sale for any brewery smaller than Kokanee. <laughs> yeah you know yeah. like kokanee yeah. maybe like somewhere like 
Steamworks, the big big time. We'll, we'll still go there. We'll go oh, with yeah. Phillips. You know, we'll, and, may, uh, maybe maybe we'd even go with like Stanley Park, like those mm-hmm. fake ones that the Molson's the, purchased. Yeah, Molson buys or yeah. uh, you know maybe if he catches mm-hmm. on a on a desperate day. I'm looking at I'm catch I catch myself on the monitor once in a while, and this is a handsome jersey. It's a very, very and elegant looking jersey. People had a lot of negative feedback on it. We did a podcast on the entire line of them. We rated them. Mm-hmm. And uh, I almost just got this one to troll people. But I do like it. Yeah, yeah. I wanted, I, I've been waiting to get a, a, a sweater for a long time. I just, But the Leaf sweater never changes. It's always the same. Do I get the Clarky or or do I get... Like more of a retro, like and then the green St. Pat's. Like no, my green is Ryder green. Yeah, like, don't give me any leaf green. You have the hat. Do you have a St. Pat's hat though? I do have. A, I have a green leaf hat. The green that the St. Patrick's Day. Well, because that was two twenty two for twenty five at Lids. That's right. Those right. Are, those are good and, I, and I ran out of like I had to collect all of them. We even have a fucking Bruins hat. That well, was Des. 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 Des <laughs> he's the original six guy. He's a Bob York. He was a Bob York. That's guy. true. That's you true. Know, Bob York. But anyways, anyway. Uh, Russell has agreed to facilitate a giveaway with us in February. They are going into the LCBOs in Ontario. Okay, so this is you might not know this yet if you're you know in Ontario we never had Russell beer, but this is a big deal. It's a very big deal, and they are only going in with with um, one particular brand, one of one beer. We're not going to tell what it is yet, and. Uh, because that's part of the contest, right? Yeah, well, and, I mean, uh, if they made it this far into the video, they're going to be in the contest. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I know, it's there's no skill testing question, and everybody will get the answer. But they are going to facilitate us with four, at this point, four, four packs of the beer that's going into the LCBO. We will announce that beer next Saturday on our season preview with our, our panel of Sean, Tommy, me and other Trevor. Yep. And then we'll run some sort of way that we can ship those tall cans to uh, listeners who identify the the beer in Ontario only. So it'll be like here, Ontario listeners, try this beer, give one to your friends, and then go to the LCBO and buy it because it's a fucking good beer. Yeah. And we're gonna get to it. We're not gonna say which one it is. No. And uh, but you saw the one Reggie reached for, so you might no, want to. No, you didn't. They didn't oh, okay. see that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but we're very thankful for that, and that's going to be fun. Yeah, it's all, it's all probably only our second real contest that we've been part of. Fifth Street did the uh, Leafs uh, game tickets that one time with us yeah. for a Leaf game in Vancouver. Which that's is right. Huge. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah that was that was to awesome. Send someone to a game was was yeah. Dope. yeah. And so and so that that's coming up on our season uh, preview, which. It's hard to believe there's a season coming up, but uh, it is, and we're very pumped for it. But yeah, so a little little contest with Russell too. So yeah, these so. guys are these are really solid guys. Like they they're passionate about their beer, and they're passionate about the people that love their beer. Yeah, right. Yeah, they like they like we said at the start of the podcast, he chose the cream ale as his beer of the year. Yeah, and um, you know, and it could have been any brewery, and and. You know, as a gesture, I suppose mm-hmm. they just gave us like, you know, yeah. twenty four tall cans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really and good craft blew, It blew me away. Yeah, uh, you know, because right, you you didn't even know when you went out to meet them what you were actually going to receive from them. Like mm. you drove out across town yeah. to their place and met them, and yeah, yeah, you no, know, and that was great. And it was like he kept handing me so these four packs, and it's like I, I I'm kind of like, are you serious? And so yeah, and. uh and then you came out to drop some things off. To me, I was still in quarantine. Yeah, that's right. I brought some groceries staying to you. at a family friend's vacant suite. Yeah. And um, he brought some groceries out and while well, he was still out. And I, I got to witness this. I was just blown away. He yeah. Just, like, pulled out this fucking huge flat of tall cans. I know. <laughs> so, like... I, I believe I dropped off some naan bread. Yeah. Um, some bacon, t- t- bacon, some tzatziki. No tzatziki. No tzatziki. No, I never had no, tzatziki. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, um, you already had hummus. Guacamole. Yeah, I have the list on my phone. And still chips. And a text message if we want to go down there. <laughs> if we, if we're later in the pod, we run into things to talk yeah, we're about. We're running out. We'll, maybe, go, maybe. we'll go over your shopping <laughs> like list. Grocery, what I like to eat when I'm <laughs> locked down. Uh, lockdown food. We'll go to like lockdown food. So we're gonna go to the dark bucket. Well, should we? Now. Should we do the light? 
Or oh, should, should we? we? Should we go? Let's uh, break it up. Yeah, I was, I was, yeah. I was thinking, I was thinking yeah, let's maybe. break it up. So, this year, the Navi's a driddle. Mm-hmm. Um, just a bit of the driddle is is a, a kind of a blonde nail, and the name Navi's a driddle is a German pun. Um, so the word for like quarter, like a district of a city, is fittel. Mm-hmm. which rhymes with drittle, which is Blondale. So they have the Navi is a drittle, and that's a, a quarter of the city. They have the St. Johanna drittle, which is another area. Navi is a drittle, definitely the, the go-to drittle from this. And I lived mm-hmm. in the drittle, and I actually have drank with Two of the little caricatures they've included. They're real, That's incredible. real people in the city. That is nice. So the my my brother's um, girlfriend, she works at a bar in the Naviza Vidal, and that's the owner of the bar there. And there we have the old owner of the bar. That is that is, we got. We're, no, obviously we're keeping that bottle. Yes, yes. Can I can I, can I see it? Yeah, and, and so when I drank with them, it's a very interesting dynamic over there. Mm-hmm. Um, the bars close, and uh, they usually don't close, but due to corona, they, they close at about two. Right. And um, they close all the blinds, and all the friends of the staff stay and hang out and drink and take shots and stuff, and people are just smoking inside of the bar at that point. And, yeah. And, um, yeah, smoking cigarettes and joints and everything. It kind of turns into a, <laughs> a free-for-all in these bars when they close, and... One night I was there till like six in the morning, hanging out with the old owner. It's like sixty, seven year old guy. And uh, nice, yeah. yeah so use the the. Uh, that yeah. was the night I hung out with people on the bottle. Awesome man, that's great. What a what a cool stubby little bottle too. Like it's uh, it's very nice. Yes, it's the very that's a very standard bottle size in in Germany. Uh, if you order a beer at a, a cafe or something like that, that's what they'll give you. And any uh, any bottle opened on this podcast is opened by the uh, Fuggles and Warlock a bottle opener, uh, procured at the Fuggles and Warlock Brewing Company in person in Richmond, in uh, Richmond, BC, Steveston, to be exact. Um, during um, a really interesting time in the podcast, um, it might have been a turning point for us, where um, we went over for a Rough Rider game in BC. And uh, we went to Steamworks after the game, and then we went to, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then we went to Fuggles the next day on the way to the ferry, and uh, we got a brewery tour. We got to go right back into the back of the brewery. They gave us the uh, the lowdown, and uh, but it, it spawned probably one of our our my my favorite episode of the podcast where we had to retell the story of the bathroom sex in Steamworks Brewery that we <laughs> that we uh, we were a peripheral part of. There was no direct. Um, anyways, go to episode thirty-two. Honestly, I, can, I, can be... I say can I say my, my secret? <laughs> can I say my secret theory that you never heard about the bathroom sex incident? Absolutely, that? let's revisit that. Those people were not having sex. You don't think so? That was a gay friend, huh? Because the way that they confronted us, like she was kind of the more, you know, saying things and. I, I don't know. I didn't get. The, I didn't get the vibe that, that was like her boyfriend or anything, based on how our interaction with them went. Right. Well. And, and when a girl, when a when a girl and a guy go into a washroom together in 2020, I'd say two times out of ten they're doing it, and the rest of the time they're it's, doing it's lines. A, it's, it's a gay friend. Okay. It's yeah. It's it's just going to the bathroom with. Hmm. Essentially, like with one well, of the girls, yeah. I, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna not give you the nod into the uh, popular culture aspect of that story, <laughs> and, and I'll, I'll go. I'm gonna go with your story. So, cheers. It was a better. It's a better story the other way. Though. <laughs> the, the, episode thirty-two. The story's way better. <laughs> you gotta memorize. <laughs> All right. So I don't I have no idea what to expect from this beer. This is awesome. Wow, it's a lot Holy more smokes. of a like, traditional style tasting beer. You it know? is. I, I'm trying. I'm looking. I'm trying. I'm going back to like 115 episodes of the podcast and seeing like what what is that 
what is that like? But I, I don't know. It's it's very unique. And yeah, I, it's it's got its own. But I don't. I like it. Like I would. I would drink that beer. Yeah, like, like this was this once. was my this was my go to. Like, yeah. I think it was like fifteen euro for a twenty four case of of these things. Okay. And we would get one of those before like a good night of drinking and. I can tell you right now, it's not it's not a speculation of how many of these I can put back. I can put back a, a lot of these. Like right. Once one night, like Tara and I pretty much finished off a case of these things. <laughs> like, Did you? Yeah, it was. Wow. Yeah. It's um. Would you? Would you? Is it just like a? Is it a lager? Like, it's a. It's a, a lager. It's a Blondale. I think. A Blondale, more a Blondale. of a Blondale. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. But if there's any listeners in Germany that know more about yeah. the style of beer. Another um, one that you sent me some pictures of uh, during your time there was a, uh, and you brought me back a, a, mug a beautiful, a great shaped feeling beer mug was the Carlsberg with a K. Yes, not your standard Carlsberg with a C. I, I think nope. that's from the north of Germany. Carlsberg with a K is, it, it's it's not like, Molsinner. I think it's a smaller brewery, but mm-hmm. in this region I was in, in this like southwest Germany, um, kind of like right on the border of Luxembourg and France, and the, the, this beer, like it's people are so devoted to it. They're mm-hmm. so like. Like just as if you know you met some guy in Regina that was like fuck bud like Pilsner all the way, <laughs> you know? yeah. like never like and you you try and offer them another beer and they're like, no, nah, I'll go out and buy some I'm Carlsberg. Good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, they'll like walk across the street <laughs> to the fucking store and buy a Carlsberg instead. Yeah, it's like yeah. So that's a fresh hop Pilsner. Okay, and yeah, good beer, but I didn't bring it back because. It's a Pilsner. Right. Yeah. I didn't have much luggage space, and I was already oh, yeah. going a bit over you my, my liquor, pushing. my customs limit. And, and as it turned out, good time to mention, like, when you returned, the, the reentry to Canada was basically a non-event. It was it was an event, but it was a COVID COVID event. event but it, was, it wasn't a customs event. Like I, all the only time I answered the tobacco alcohol questions were at those kiosks you sign in at. Right. And then I never had to like no one second guessed you on it. No, when I went to talk to the the girl, she just told me about quarantining and the the um consequences if I didn't. Right. And yeah. that was about that. So you know, this is totally single experience, but if you're traveling back into Canada and if you do, be safe, quarantine, of course. Do it. You can't you can't fuck that up. No. But um you might be a little bit more likely to bring back a few bottles of your favorite scotch or whatever. Your, right. You brought back you know, a good vodka. I brought which back. we haven't really torn into. Nemirov. It's Nemirov. It's a, it's a Ukrainian vodka. Yes. And uh, my, my friend over there is from Ukraine. You're, you're, you you met a, a multicultural group of friends over there. Hey? I did. Yeah. Like, what, we a, were, what a great we experience. Were an international crew. We had yeah. Italians and someone from El Salvador. And, uh, yeah. Eritreans. Uh, M- yeah. Germans, of course. Okay, of course. <laughs> many, many, many Germans. No French though, for how close we were to the border. Hmm. I don't, I don't feel like there's much mobility between those two countries. Okay. I, c- I, I could see that. Yeah. I, I, I could, I could get behind that. Yeah, they're not. They, they don't think they know one another's languages very well. Mm-hmm. And for somebody that's so close in proximity, the languages are very different, eh? Yeah, like, yeah. like you, so you could like bike to France from the city we were in. Yeah, and still, like nobody there spoke French, and mm-hmm. a lot of the French people on the other side really didn't seem to speak much German, and it was just kind of like two different. Where it's nothing like. I don't. I don't know what to compare it to. Yeah. Like, you know. Well, let me ask you this. So you you did well in French in school. Yep. And now you plan on returning to Germany for school, but you have to, um, unlike Des, who's going to an English speaking university in Luxembourg. Yeah. You have to ha- have a, a certain amount of aptitude 
at, at German before you get enrolled, much like we have English as a second language programs at Camosun College and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So you have to you have to have a certain standard of English. So how how proficient are you in Germany German today? And how much harder of a language is it to learn than say French? Um, it's I am not very proficient in German today. Okay. Like if if somebody if my interaction at a store or something like that went in a different direction than I had planned. Yeah. Like if they asked me, let's say that I was buying an electronic thing and then they started to talk about warranties. Right. I would not be able to get into anything like that. Um, so you're saying you got, you spent thousands on extended, unknowingly on, on, on extended <laughs> warranties. <when> you were... <laughs> yeah. Hope not. Um, no. So yeah, I, I don't have, I'm still kind of a dunce in the German right. language, you're, but you're, you're a novice. Versus French, it's pretty much the same. Like it's the same kind of structure yeah. of like masculine, feminine, like g- gendered words and um, the way they like conjugate verbs and and stuff like that. Uh, the hard, the hardest thing about learning German that you don't have in France is. Zs are s sounds. Ss are like ts, like a ts sound. Ws are vs, and vs are ws. Mm. <laughs> and hence the Volkswagen. Yeah, yeah. So like it's you know like right. You see those that real estate firms all over the world, Engel and Volkers. It's actually Volkers. Oh really? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, familiar with that. Yeah. So yeah, like yeah. things like that. And when you're trying to pronounce things and. Hmm. You often look stupid, right? But yeah, no, it's it's a reasonable language. It's not like trying to learn English or like right Chinese or something like that. Yeah, Mandarin, you know, like yeah, because English is actually a messed up language to have to learn. Yeah, yeah, it is. Right, but they don't think that they don't they don't think that in okay. Germany. They they think English is easy. Okay, because there's no gender. Ah, you know, like right. Yeah, there's there's no gender in the words. So it's yeah they can wrap their heads around it pretty simply right right so um we're we're halfway home we're one bucket down we're bu- one bucket down one to go I don't even care like if if this is a ninety minute now what podcast, are we at? I don't know what, what does that say I think forty four minutes what's it say. 57. Are we an hour in? We're an hour in. Yes, we're going to have a two-hour YouTube podcast. Wow, if anyone is, is still with us, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> this is great. And we're not, this is, not, this is no two-parter. We're just going hard. I think the last time we contributed two hours of content to the podcast was when we <laughs> live-streamed our entire mini, mini tennis <laughs> <laughs> our, our made up game of tennis in this in actual this, room. Yeah, so this is the podcast room, but obviously during the first lockdown, yeah. the in-person podcasts went away. I, I was going to I was going to like I was going to make a prediction and I was going to save it for later in the podcast that I I think that like between all of our social media reaches and sharing that we might actually get a thousand views on this, especially if maybe Russell shares it, but if it's gonna be two hours, this is a completely self indulgent project. Oh yeah, this is this, <laughs> this is, is for us. This is yeah. for us right There's now. No... Like, we're we're in this for us and we're going to the dark side now, yeah. literally the dark no. side. Yeah, well now we're now it's now it's the the, the push for a hundred. Like views. we're not gonna start drinking any faster. And no. and we yes. did we did say at the beginning that we weren't going to edit, we weren't gonna stop it, and we weren't going to piss. So yeah. we may do an a, a piss exit. At some point, where one person has to carry the story for a while here, but I think I think we're both up to it. Especially if we can get a couple more down. Okay. Oh, you're angry. Are you so, angry right now, Reg? This is yeah. I'm angry that our pod is so long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. No, but to, to revisit um, this, this the the tennis quickly. Right. We so yeah we we decided in lockdown the pod was off for a bit other than zoom interactions so yeah here maybe you can start yeah sure you tell us um and so we took the podcast table which is gone now this is our new setup this yeah. is the debut the by debut the way of the new setup, the new setup. Yeah. Um, more of an interview format it is it's going it, very well yeah it's going great so far <laughs> um and 
So we pushed the table into the corner and we taped off a small, I don't know, what do you think? Like, Sport court. Like 12 by 6 or something? Well, the actual, no, the, the exact measurement. Yeah, what was it? Was, like, it was like 60 by 40, a little court with a yeah. homemade net. Yes, yeah, so we made a net out of two, like, poles. It was a microphone stand and then this big kind of, like, Saskatchewan Deerstein. Rough Riders beverage tower. <laughs> yeah. And... We tied some string from one to another and took just this like shitty dollar store red tablecloth we had. I'm good. Nice. And um, pickleball, pickleball rackets yep. and a little, was it the wiffle ball? It was a wiffle ball. The it's wiffle right ball? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And here, I'll show you our rackets. Yeah, go get, get, get them. Let's do a plug. Watch your headphones. Oh, these are the new the new chairs. Now that Reggie's out of one, this is the new chairs we got for the podcast so this room. This is one of our poles. <laughs> the Saskatchewan <laughs> Rough Rider beverage container. And we created a game. We created a, a carpet game. And and we got wasted one night and decided that we were gonna. Instagram live. live stream like what like a five set match or yeah something we did like a five that? set match <laughs> it was a it was a good what how long was that Instagram live it was a good it was like two hours uh, it was it? like over 90 minutes yeah, yeah it was long so I guess we, make, we when we get together in this room we make long content <laughs> we do actually right so, and here, so you want to talk about this beer yeah this beer it's actually I believe I've been making it for a really long time um Probably one of their earlier beers as well, because I remember when I was a teenager, it was one of the earlier craft beers I ever tried. Is that with the fake ID? No, that, no, it name? was. I was maybe not. A teen, I was probably more like eighteen or nineteen. Okay, it was uh, my ex girlfriend's dad, Kevin. Yeah, he was a craft beer guy. He was a nice guy. Early craft beer guy, like a, an old school Victoria craft beer guy. Yeah, and uh, rode his bike to work. Gave me one of these. And yes, he did ride his bike to his his tech job. Yeah, so yeah. It's very so craft he, beer. He fit the demographic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, and it's called the Angry Scotch Ale. Is it a wee Angry Scotch Ale? A wee Angry Scotch Ale. Is there a wee in there? It's a wee, a wee Angry it is Scotch too. Ale. Yeah, that's so Mike Myers. It is it right. Is. <laughs> so. The Do angry we have a write up? Ale. No, we don't. It's. I'm gonna I'm gonna find a write up no, for that I one. I don't. Don't quote me on this to any beer magazines. Right. Um, but I think what constitutes a Scotch ale is that the beer is aged in casks that they used to once age Scotch. That sounds familiar. Yeah, that's. Yeah. I think that's what's going on with this kind of beer. Yeah. I'm going to tell you all about it. And you just... You... You crushed a bomber of this last night. Yeah, I did in like a thirty-minute Zoom call with with, my buddy. with the non-drinking side of the family. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> the, here's the deets: a wee angry Scotch ale crafted in the style of a nineteenth-century ninety-shilling Scotch ale is a strong dark ale with dominant malt accent that originated in Edinburgh, made with Scottish specialty malts, including peated malt, imparting a slightly smoky character to the beer. Available in bombers, six times two hundred and thirty mils. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> maybe that only, cool. maybe only in Vancouver. Maybe a uh, nineteen liter keg. Yep. A thirty liter keg, and they're going hard on the, the 50 left coast leaves. The keg. left coast leaves yeah. recommended fifty liter keg. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's the uh, the uh, leaf opening night f- format of drinking, it's drinking to forget. It's what we do as fans. <laughs> so yeah, yeah this you is the drank, angry you've, Scotch ale. I haven't drank to remember Shit. anything yet. No, I know. Yeah, so this I I can't say enough good things about this beer. Yeah. It's smooth. It tastes great. Like I feel like I feel like if this was the beer that I was tasting of my dad's when I was a kid, I w- I would have started drinking when I was like ten. I would have had 
a sip of this and been like, yeah, I, I need this. Fuck, yeah. fuck juice. <laughs> <laughs> fuck the juice boxes. This just tastes objectively good. Like, give this to your aunt who hates beer. And yeah. She might even like it. Well, I can have never convinced uh, my wife, your mother, <laughs> to uh, try a sip. A sip. I could have the juiciest, juiciest of juicy beers. That yes, is her favorite flavor in the world. It's a and, matter of principle like, at this point. It is. A, yeah. A, yeah. She's just being stubborn at this it's, point. And you are, and you offer more than you need to, and which which pushes her to decline. I, I, I offer every beer. You made it a bit of a and stick a, for a while. I so I'll never. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. It is a stick. It now. is. You're it's right. Like, <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's, uh, it's never happening. Yeah, it's no. never happening on principle. Yeah, but who knows? Maybe, maybe one day. Maybe one day. Maybe dem- one, dementia. Maybe if one day she really needs something from you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> oh. say, I'll have a, I'll have a beer, but then we don't stop each other from doing anything. So it's like, ah, you want that? Yeah, go buy it. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, if she say she's got a flat tire in the porn, right? Or maybe it's, it's the third holiday in a calendar year with her family and not me. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that one, which. <laughs> That's fine too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> She's not a beer drinker. Let's just put it that way. She's no. not a beer drinker, but she has three men in her life that are love craft beer. No. But we, what, we, was the, what was the first beer you ever drank? Man, like when I was like five or six, I think Papa gave me a sip of some kind of whatever shit he was drinking. Oh, really? My, da- my dad, Papa. Hey, shout out to my dad if you're still here. Yep. And uh, I mean, not here as in with us. We know you're alive, but if you're still listening after two hours, <laughs> after one hour, if you're into the second hour, which you will be. Uh, my first like full beer I had to myself. Yeah, like with like well, that was like your first like I'm sneaking a beer. Okay, well, it's I mean, and my first drink was not a beer. It was um, one of my friend's mom's like black cherry flavored Mike's Hard Lemonade. But I think the first beer I ever snuck would have been from the same friend's mom, <laughs> hey Labatt, uh, little Labatt Blue. Oh, the old blue, hey. Yeah, and then the and then blue. sometimes his dad would have. And this was you know around the era we started snagging a beer, fourteen, fifteen, and yeah, uh, the Sleeman Honey Brown, and that was like if he bought twelve. And we knew that you wouldn't notice one was missing because those were like the nice beers. Yeah, and we, we we probably wouldn't get in that much trouble if we stole a, a bat. But if we took a honey brown, we'd be like, "Fuck, boys, come on! Like you're taking the good I, shit." I had seven honey browns, and now there's six. What the fuck is going yeah, on? Yeah, honestly, here, it's so I I can't remember when the Sleemans was the Cadillac of beers. That I I consider that my first craft beer. Sleemans, like, my yeah. first. Local, like we're a craft brewery. Beer was Phillips Bottle Rocket, but yes, that that beer was definitely my first beer that I tasted and like enjoyed, like to where it was like I would actually taste wise rather drink this than a Coca Cola or something like that. Right, because yeah. when you're first drinking beers, like I remember we'd drink like. Yeah, blue or PBR, or Lucky Lager, or whatever the fuck we could get our hands on, and yeah, kind of choking it down. A lot of the time, it was yeah. it was warm because we couldn't keep it in any kind of fridge because we were kids, and like we'd just be drinking like warm Budweiser or something, and like yeah, it sucks, but you're doing it, and then after you have like three, you feel kind of drunk, and you're like, yeah, it's definitely worth it. <laughs> yeah. But, oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What was your first? Distinct, because you've been living in Victoria, pretty much since the the beginning of like the early days mm. of the craft beer. Oh my right? god, so, A- so like, 80, 86. Spinnakers, like VIB, yeah. any any shit like that? No, um, I was I was pretty much a I went on like a a, a long Coors Light run. Okay, a long Coors Light run, and then my first, I believe, my first craft beer that I like, I went. To a, I, I want to say it was at the Malahat Mountain Inn. <laughs> nice. And it was Grandpa's birthday. Okay. And I think I ordered a dark matter. 
I ordered a I ordered a Hoyne Dark Matter. Nice, yeah. And I, gate, I'm pretty the, sure, the and it wasn't it wasn't beer. that long ago. Like it wasn't like 1995. I had a Russell well, no, Cream I, Ale. I, I remember like, that. I was late. I was late to the party. I remember when that party occurred. I wasn't there, but yeah. I remember that was like probably 2000. Might have been his seventh, 70th birthday. Maybe, I think I th- like I think I remember because it, it was like not not yeah it, it was. Not long before he died. You right? were probably on a volleyball trip. I was. Or I think something no, it was during like my that. first year of school. Yeah, and I really wanted to go because that's a really good restaurant. But I had to stay and do some kind of essay or something. Right. Like that. It was my first year of college, so it would have yeah. been 2014. Oh, okay. It was at university. Okay. Yeah. But no, that's not true then, because Des and I were drinking craft beer in the house before that. In to- like in pre 2014. I was. Yeah, I was. Um, hmm. I was almost legal, and I remember, like... You were legal in 90... Yeah, I remember in, being... 2015. 2015. And I remember yeah. being, like, 17, and Des would be bringing craft beer home, and we'd be drinking it. I may have to change my answer. I think it might have been a bottle rocket, too. It might have been a blue buck. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a blue buck. Yeah, definitely. Definitely a blue buck. If you even consider that craft anymore. If you, it is. Oh, it, yeah. Completely. Yeah. 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 Okay, if, Phillips, if, Phillips blue buck for those who don't yeah, know. Yeah, you can probably buy that anywhere in Canada. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know about. You can. It goes, it's everywhere. Yeah, I yeah. don't know about I don't know about Montreal or like Quebec East, but definitely, definitely from Ontario West, you can mm-hmm. pick up Phillips blue buck. It's got a blue can. With a blue buck on it. Yeah. Yep. And yeah. it's 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 an easygoing beer. I remember seeing it in uh, Regina in uh, nine, in 2018. Yeah. And it was a six pack was like twenty one dollars, and it was in the import section. Phillips Blue Buck, and I think a six pack here is like fourteen, right? Canadian import. Yeah, yeah, it was an import, <laughs> and uh, but that was like like. Saskatchewan was late. They were late to the uh, to the party for uh, for craft beer, but uh, they just yeah. you know they have a couple of breweries now. But yeah, yeah, I feel like craft beer kind of it bolstered the coasts, mm-hmm. and then it, it moved in. Yeah, you know, it, you're right. Yeah, and in in the states too. Yeah, I think a lot of our Ontario listeners could speak to this better, but it's a there's a pretty raging scene in Ontario now. Like I was there, I was in Toronto a couple of years back, a year and a half ago. And like I walked rocking around downtown. There was a lot of breweries. Yeah. Toronto, Toronto is, is a brewery place for sure. Yeah. And yeah, they're, uh, so it, it's, it's definitely, it's, it's everywhere now. And, uh, you were last summer, you did a little, um, tour at a, at a, at a music festival in Portland. Yes, which is like sort of known for the the scene. Yeah, did you, I, any, anything interesting? I there? went to one craft brewery downtown. I have no idea what it was. They had this orange creamsicle ale. Uh, Russell actually has one. I have the can right there. Yeah, I, I don't know but whatever this was. It, it actually tasted like an orange creamsicle. Like it tasted. <laughs> there was indistinguishable. It was like it was, it was like a melted was, orange creamsicle like made a, into it was a like beer. A Bacardi Breezer. I don't even know <laughs> okay. how they're calling this beer. It was really, <laughs> yeah. it was well, really, it was yeah. really good though. That's fair. It was really good. But no, I that was the very end of a tour when we got to Portland at the very end of like a sum a long summer of touring. Yeah. And I just like straight up ran out of money in Portland, and it was like our last place. So I just kind of just you hunkered able to down in your hotel on. and ate Domino's the entire yeah, time. Yeah, I right? ordered a couple of pizzas, and with like the last of my money, and I had a little fridge in my hotel room, and I just like, <laughs> yeah, I I took that and man, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yeah, and that was that led to some of the some of the worst shits of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure here. Oh man, that's, uh, that'll ha- that'll happen. Craft yeah, well, beer, craft beer, and day old dominoes. That's the thing is, I did actually. Oh, what was? Yeah, I don't know, man. There, there was a beer sponsor at the festival. Like I was drinking a lot. Okay, it was cool actually. They gave you these like reusable cups. You, you told me that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. This metal. We yeah. still have it up there. It's a metal cup with like an orange ring. I know exactly it. where it is. Yeah, it's in the yep. it's in the cupboard and yep. um, above the fridge. So you got that at the start, and that was like your water cup, your beer cup. 
um, anything you drank at the festival. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I did get to drink a lot of craft beer, but I don't know. I didn't. Uh, I didn't take note of the brewery. Right. But I think that's probably because of the dispensaries. I bet you. I bet you the Pickathon website will will uh, have the um, <laughs> the brewery uh, name on it. Pickathon is the music festival. Yeah, it's a it's a very very cool festival. Pickathon twenty nineteen, right? Yeah, yeah. It's crazy to think that just over a year ago we were well internationally driving around, going a big. You know what? Like many thousand people events of all and... the of all the people that have been affected by by COVID. I mean the the arts have just got fucked over. Yeah, like it, it and it and it sucks. We don't want to get into any sort of political diatribe. Another big word, thank you. <laughs> but uh, like Amazon grows, the arts gets screwed, right? Yeah, like, it's like it's like it's not even close to being fair. No, no, right? And and yeah, it's. I know it's it's crazy. Yeah, I can't. There's nothing to say about that. No. Except uh, let's talk about the uh, Angry Scotch Ale. Have we talked about it? I, I said a little. Like, the wee was... Angry Scotch Ale. I think I said my bit. Um, yeah. But what do you what do you think about it? I don't think you've put your two cents in. For me? <laughs> um, I'm going to give this beer a very seasonal rating. Oh. It's a... It's definitely a winter beer for me. Yeah. Like I'm gonna I'm going to go to this in the winter time when it's dark at four. Yeah. And uh, I'm not gonna buy it in the on the deck in the summertime. I'm gonna go more for the for the sours and that sort of thing in the summertime. But I would definitely buy this beer in the winter. Yeah. It's a winter I, beer I think, for me. I and think I think that's... that's the theme of our of our next bucket. Yeah, Pretty we're much, getting right? into the dark beers into now. The dark beers and, and, and it's and, and for me it's obvious that this is a winter beer for me. And I, I like yeah. the taste. Like I've I've I, I'm I'm more of a winter beer guy. Like I think I think some of my favorite beers as I've proven my beers of the year ha, since we did the pod was the my first ever one was the four mile rice pudding porter. Yeah. Right? And did then, they do that this year? What's that? Did they do that this I year? I don't know. I've lost track of Four Mile since the fire. I don't know what they're doing. And they're still then they, doing beer. They're, they're so, they're, they are. Their tangerine is still one of we the should, best all-time We should go beers. through their, their store we by should. 50s. Uh, they have a liquor store there. Yeah, and they have all yeah. their beer there. But so so I can't remember my next one. No, and then my second one was the uh, the Yellow Dog. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah Play Dead, right? The Play Dead IPA. Yeah. Yeah, right yeah. there. And so, again, a bit of a darker beer and IPA. And then third time around is the darker cream ale. So I'm definitely, I, I kind of like my, my beer darker. And, yeah. And, and I like my winter beers. And so I would not object to drinking this one in the winter time, but I wouldn't buy it in the summer, I don't think. I would, I would, the only time I would buy it in the summer is if I was indoors at a bar at night. Yeah. And it was on tap. Right, and then it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. But yeah, 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 exactly. I think for the we angry Scotch, it is definitely it's one of their flagships. It's I would they, say they, they hang their hat on this beer a lot. Yeah, and I would say three to four, depending on how you're doing. Yeah, I think four if you really enjoyed the first three. But right. it would it would be a bit of a gamble drinking a fourth tall can of this. <laughs> right. Yeah. Pu- you're pushing it. That's a good point. That's a good point. Um yes. so now do we go seasonal? Do we save the seasonal for last? Oh, you'll see. No, we're, we're kind of talking about seasonality right now. Yeah, we it's are kind actually. Of yeah, it's, yeah, it's, so, a, it's a it's a it's a good transition. Here we have a beer that is Another 12 months away from being relevant right now, but we're still going to drink it. Yes, because it was free. <laughs> and so it's the Russell Brewing Company. Big surprise. Naughty and Spiced Porter. Now, we got four of these. Yeah. I think you've drank three. I I don't. I think you gave me a taste of one one was night. There, so this no, will be my first venture. I think there's one left. No, we. I drank two. Okay. Yeah, this was my gift opening 
beer. Right. And this was, yeah, when I, uh, as a uh, oh. family with some German heritage, we continue the, the German topic here. I'm grabbing dirty glasses. Oh, God. I'm riding dirty. Cut off. <laughs> here, let's use these ones. Oh, these are sweet glasses. They were these were part of a little Christmas present mixer pack or a pack of a a very nice beer and glasses that Wyatt gave us. Yeah, a couple of years ago. That's a great craft beer glass. Holy fuck! But yeah, so um, we do our what I was saying is the the German style to open your presents on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. So I, I drank this while I opened presents, and it was one of my first beers out of quarantine because that was the day I got out. Right, and, yes, uh, yes. And I had them chilled. It was a nice reintroduction to the world of BC craft yeah. beer, which, man, when you get accustomed to the craft beer in a place like Victoria, mm -hmm. this proximity to Vancouver and Seattle, Portland, and trains yeah. always coming out from Eastern Canada, bring crazy beers, and... You get pretty spoiled. You get you get spoiled to the point where it's like actually upsetting to be <laughs> in a place where like if you know there's a couple IPAs and they're hit and miss. People don't really know yeah. what IPAs are about, and you want a really good, well done beer. You gotta get a Belgian beer, and Belgian beers are kind of like well, you know, good, what? but they're heavy and they're rich. I, and... I I know we said we weren't going to call anybody on this pod. Yeah, but we've but been maybe talking we need, for a maybe long we need to cold call Troy because you just made a really good point because he lives in Regina. He does, and he is. Um, we've cold called him before on the podcast, but he is. Yeah, it's funny you putting him on the spot like that. yeah. So he is. Um, there's there's. There's a brewery in Regina called Rebellion Brewing Company, mm -hmm. and you'd think like, oh, like Troy, could Troy, whose first introduction, Drink. cheers, to craft beer, beer was out here doing a renovation project and drinking a shit ton of Category Twelve, uh, and the when they now first, within a week of them opening, the now defunct, never to be seen again due to change in ownership, Black Betty from VIB. That was oh. a spectacular. I'm calling my brother. That beer was so because he, good. he like the the biggest craft brewery in Regina is called Rebellion, and he's not down with Rebellion beer. Is he not? A, he's he's nope. he's not he's in the Rebellion. Not down with him. He seeks out BC craft beer in Regina. Yeah. Um. So he doesn't know we're calling him. I remember we cold called him. Maybe it was on the David Ayer Zamboni Driver Zambuca night. No, that 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 were that two separate nights. That was those were two separate. It was on the Uzo night, but it wasn't David Ayer's. <laughs> it was, David Ayer's wasn't because the you Uzo were night. Not, you weren't with Sean on David Ayer's because you were with Sean. And he was going to do a pre and post, but then he went home. Right, he was livid for whatever yeah. reason. Yeah, um, I don't remember. Yeah, so let's. It was see playoffs. If, let's see if we get him here. Trying, or, no, trying out new technology here. Um, you got that in the wrong input, I man. I put it in the wrong hole. It happens. <laughs> Hello? Troy Bass. We'll try him again. But, so, yeah, so, like, there are there are dead zone regions in the craft beer world. There are. And right? Saskatchewan is kind of in there. Mm -hmm. It's not. So we're gonna sort of see what he has to. Uh... I remember, but, but like going even farther back when we went there for your fiftieth birthday party, which was sixteen, seventeen years ago. Right, <laughs> five or six. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, like what twenty thirteen or something like that, and um, we went into the liquor store there and we couldn't like there wasn't even a twenty dollar BC option. Like I right. think we got Shock Top was we did, most, you're right. was the most craft beer we could find and what's that, Labat? Shock Top isn't real craft. Just just a just a little word of warning to all of all of the people here that want to support local businesses is that Stanley Park is not a craft brewery. Hello. Hey. Hey, we're out. Hey. We're out Have we? We've, hey. been, we've been messing with you a little bit. You've been messing with me a little bit. Did we answer? Did you answer like five times? Because I think I just. 
I had a little technological glitch. Well, Anna, no, and my table, my phone was laying on the table, and she said that you were calling. Oh, okay. And, yeah. So and you're I on. You're on. My ringer off. You're on the air. You're on the air. Oh, nice. So, so Reg and I are doing our our Russell uh, YouTube slash podcast, and we okay. kind of got into a little conversation about um, like sort of dead zones of craft beer, and we you we we brought you up. And this yeah. is my brother Troy. For all those who don't who don't know, who's Troy been on the pod Regina. before from Regina, I hate and, you guys. and so we kind of said, I I said that like you live in Regina. There is a pretty decently sized um, uh, craft brewery there called Rebellion. But does just because it's craft beer doesn't mean you have to. You're a fan of it because you're not you're not overly down with Rebellion beer. No, I don't. I I don't buy it. I never do buy it, and it's not. No reason other than I don't find it, even from the beginning when it first showed up and the growlers and we could fill them up and yeah and We've I been never there, loved I've, the beer. I've been there with you before. Yeah, yeah, no, and I, I've never loved their beer. No, and uh, it's it's just not. You know, they're pretty popular. They they're in a lot of taps and in in pubs and yeah and bars in Saskatchewan and stuff. But um, you know, definitely not one of my first choices. Right. I, uh, and I don't know. Maybe it's because I started drinking craft beer out there. That's what. That's exactly just said what that. we said. We, we, yeah, brought, up, we brought up the category twelve experience yeah. and the Black Betty experience. Yeah. No. And, and the trash 49. panda. The, the trash, trash panda. panda. That's right. Yeah. yeah P forty nine. Yeah. So I know you and I we exchanged a lot of craft beer pictures on uh, on WhatsApp, and you actively seek out VC craft beers. I do definitely. Like you're currently and, uh, working on the hot box, right? And uh, and and you know, Sean got me onto the fat tug, but it's <laughs> not available at any of our Sobies oh, anymore. Oh, no kidding, eh? Since the Damn. since the bombers kind of went away, they haven't got the uh, the uh, the cans back in the tall boys. So, yeah, because yeah. they 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 started going. They started making three fifty five cans. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, so that probably replaced the bombers, and then they couldn't ship them out as easily. But the nice thing about the Sobeys liquor stores out here is if you actually suggest something, they'll do their best to bring it in. So right. Um, right. I maybe just have to be a voice. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. like beer buyers want to know what their customers want, right? Like they 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 want to know what uh, what people want to drink, and because you're going to come yeah. and buy it, right? Yeah, and we have a decent we have a decent selection of the Phillips out here too. So it's uh, yes, you've been really Phillips, rocking the, the Phillips. Uh, you've, you're, you've been. You've uh, been introduced to the uh, the glitter bomb, and yep. and that sort of thing. And I saw you posted a glitter bomb last night. Yeah, the Octobox. I've had. Uh, oh, nice. Two, yeah. two of the Octoboxes in the last week. So yeah. Oh, sick. What's your What's your favorite yeah. of the Octobox? Uh, my favorite is probably the glitter bomb. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's a solid, solid beer. I think that's your it probably is. your favorite of yep. those four, right? It, it definitely is. Yeah, the glitter yeah. bomb. It's. Of, of their, I call it their festival lineup because they, Phillips, when you come out here one day for a festival or some sort of outdoor event, Troy, Phillips is sort yeah. of the, the brewery that has the big setup and they set up at like a music festival and they'll have probably five or six or seven beers on tap and, yeah. and then they just pour the plastic glasses and it's always, it's the glitter bomb, it's the electric unicorn. Help me out right here, Reg. Um, uh, like Blue Buck, usually. Blue Buck. The, the citrus one, the citrus, uh, I can't remember what it's called. Tiger Shark. Tiger Shark. Yeah. That's, my, all, that's, that's my all favorite. Those. That's my favorite of the Octobox. That's a very, I'd have to put that up against the um, the Glitter Bomb, I think. Yeah. 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 The cit- Citricity, it's called. Oh, Citricity. That yes. one. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the, yeah. Great, the Grapefruit IPA. Yeah. And I only know that because I just poured one in a glass. Nice. Oh, oh, nice. Damn. So that's what you're currently drinking. That's the content yeah, we're, we're just, looking for. Uh, yeah, we're drinking, playing some some dominoes, some Mexican train dominoes game. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, that's what we're doing right now. Nice. So we we started yeah. out doing this like so we had yes, yeah, you know what we're doing is we did the six um, these six uh, Russell beers that we're gonna do on and we're doing a YouTube as well, and um, and then Reggie has two little stubby bottles that he brought back from Germany that we're reviewing as well. So we are right. we are almost so that's ten that's eight beers. We got two left in the buckets, and we I thought okay we could probably crush this entire podcast in forty five minutes. 
We're probably 90 minutes in now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and uh, and so it's going to be a long YouTube. So, you know, you could say anything you want. In the 90th minute, like nobody's, literally nobody's listening anymore. <laughs> That's right. So you everyone, got you got anything you want to get connected. off your chest? Like just like let her rip. <laughs> no, because no, because she's sitting right beside me. All right, okay. Well, we, we you should you should probably you should probably get back to your sketchy dominoes game. There, I hope you're playing That's for right. money. And yeah, uh, no, I, I'm not because I don't have any. I got to get some first, and then I will. <laughs> right on, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, maybe we'll uh, we'll hit you up. Uh, we'll let you know when the link goes up, and and what and what minute you're in, and uh, you can listen to yourself. All right, guys. You're a minor celebrity. Right on. <laughs> okay, man. Love hey, it. Say hello right. to Annie for me. All right. We'll uh, talk to you later. Okay, bye. Take care. Okay, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that technology. We just like we just called a we cold called a guest. Yeah. That's, All right. We're we're tapped in. Cheers to Cheers that. Cheers to that. I, I have to say something. I don't know how we're going to handle this because we we kind of didn't have a plan for this, but but. I may have to exit stage left and have a piss. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not gonna make it. Like, do you want? Do we edit? Do we edit this out? Do we just like do leave we just, we just... and then edit, or do we just? Do you want to carry this? Yeah, for, I can. I can probably carry it. Seconds? Yeah, yeah. Should Fuck I just it. should I step outside the back door there? Just, Would that be best? Darlene, or use Darlene's, a toilet? Should be Darlene's toilet, I guess. I don't know. I think I gotta walk across the camera though. It's fine. All right, I'll be right back, Reg. You got to tell tell a Germany story. Tell about um, your basketball, your your basketball events or uh, <laughs> something. You, you got this. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, welcome to the Reggie Bast edition of the Left Coast Leafs podcast. Here. Um, yeah. So, I think uh, an interesting part of the podcast is is that they they decided to include craft beer it's not natural to you know the hockey world or anything like that you you watch a hockey game and you get you know it's it's usually sponsored by some very non-craft beer company or something like that but i think that's what makes the podcast unique and and stand out from other podcasts is is that they they've made it patently west coast it's the left coast leafs and that doesn't just mean that it's two dicks on the west coast talking about the leafs it's it's two dicks on the west coast talking about the leafs and something that is very very natural and important to the the west coast culture so I hope I hope that the listeners of this podcast enjoy that portion and see it for what it what it truly is because it's a it's a window it's a snapshot into the drinking portion of being a Leafs fan in this part of the world which is a big fucking part of being a Leafs fan is drinking and we welcome Trevor back I even washed my hands oh wow imagine that what a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> you want to finish? Uh, you want to finish your thought? At all, no, or I was, good? I was just, I was just monologuing. You're riffing. I might actually leave you now in yep. the in the driver's seat. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll go out this side. Sure. Um, so for those who are still with us, uh, we, we're going to have a uh, a season preview. If you if you're a regular listener to the podcast, you've uh, you've you've caught uh, our our pods with uh, Tommy, Trevor, and Sean, and what we're going to do. I turned it down. What we're going to do is uh, do it all by Zoom because we can't be together. Sean's now in Ontario. Tommy's in Victoria, but we can't be with him because of our public health orders. And uh, Trevor's moved back to Regina. And so um, it actually is my plan to to re- to um, unite my brother who we just spoke to and uh, and Trevor from our uh, our preview pods in Regina and uh they could have some leaf uh some leaf fandom moments together and uh, I think that'll uh I I think they'll get along really well. It's uh the couple a uh, couple of common leaf 
the fans and they seem to have like similar dispositions. It sounds like an insult. A couple of common leaf fans. A couple of uh with, with similar similar uh, dispositions and uh and all that. So uh Reg will be back in a in a few minutes here. He's uh uh we we went uh, we went longer than we thought, so we did actually have to uh relieve ourselves an hour and thirty minutes. Typically uh the only people that get People listen for an hour and thirty minutes. Are uh, Joe Rogan and Steve Dangle? So we'll see uh, how we see how the stats play out here, and how many people are actually listening after the ninetieth uh, minute. I would uh, I would expect that Sean won't even be tuning in anymore as the uh, the level of the content uh, diminishes. But we this is bonus content, and we're not here for the hockey as much as we are here for the beer. And to celebrate 2021 and introduce our new sort of podcast format. If people have um, seen photos of the studio before, we had a table where Sean and I sat across from each other and and did the podcast in person, which is probably one of the funnest things I've ever I've ever done with my my time as a hobby. And uh, now Sean has moved back to Ontario to pursue other other uh, um, opportunities in life. But that doesn't mean the Left Coast News podcast is going to diminish. We actually are going to uh, keep doing it. And but I thought, you know what? I don't need the big the big pine table. I don't need the same setup. And I'm going to do more of a of a sort of two people sitting together chatting format. Uh, when it's just me and the computer, it'll be me and Sean. But when uh, COVID restrictions are listed, I would love to have people sitting in the studio with me. Maybe if Ontario people are finally vacationing back out in BC, fellow Leaf fans come have a chat in the studio with me and that sort of thing. And uh, so this, this new setup offers us many opportunities as, as uh, Reggie enters the chat. And uh, Hello. and he has finished his, uh, his angry Scotch ale. Are you any more angry? Yeah. <laughs> So I'm fucking pissed. <laughs> so uh, as advertised, this is the Angry Scotch Ale. <laughs> so you you might as well start the other one, and I'll, I'll be finished this. Like I'll be uh, I'll be good. It better be. And uh, so this is the I'm gonna guess outside of the my favorite beer with um, Russell the Cream Ale, which I'm not shy to talk about. I I'm looking forward to this one. I've had I have had this one. I think you and I shared one of these earlier. But this this is my jam. This is my winter jam. Today was a rainy, shitty day. It was bad on the west coast. It was windy. It was um, a rainy, and I think and this is my beer. This is this is my winter beer right here. And now we are moving on to yes, just a uh, just a classic. Classic style of beer, you know, you got no name for it. It's just, it is what it is. It is the oatmeal stout. Classy, you know. And we actually have this really great little cartoon on the side. It's an outstanding label, people. Like, I will post the label. Yeah, you should post the label. I should post the label because it is is one of the most creative artworks out there. Yeah, it's just a little cartoon. Yeah. Of a cat. It's lethargic. And then it. I can drink, it, it 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 drinks some oatmeal stout. Put some put some stout on its oatmeal. It's making oatmeal. It's not liking it. <laughs> Throw some of this shit on its oatmeal. Suddenly, and then all of a sudden, it starts fucking flying, literally yeah. flying. So, if you want to fly, yeah. Or if your oatmeal sucks, yeah, yeah. Like if you're just buying those like shitty packets of oatmeal hey, like, hey, 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 uh, you hey, like, oh, you, like <laughs> you, you i know you like a packet <laughs> dino, but you, but, dino eggs are fucking great man but you you might you might want to spice it up with some oatmeal stout <laughs> i'm not i'm just i'm just saying i'm just saying but uh so talk to me about um the the uh the sports scene in germany i mean you were there at a very crazy like like crazy time but recreationally like i see like i see these pictures on google satellite of these like 
there's expansive tennis facilities of like 17 clay courts in one area. Yeah. Um, did you come across anything like that? No. Did you come across any hockey rinks? No. Did you? I know you and Des. And I was in a pretty a basketball court. I was in a pretty like I don't want to call it a small town, mm-hmm. but it's like. It is. You know, it's, it's a small it's, province. It's, and it's a like small a small. Town. It's not a small town because there's like big buildings and all the kind yeah. of infrastructure you have in the big city. There's a few hundred thousand people living there for sure. Yeah, but it's a regina sized city. And I was also living in an apartment in the city center without a car, and within walking distance from everything I needed. And I wasn't really traveling to other parts of Europe. Because of the virus. Right. Yeah, you couldn't. So I don't, I didn't see much of, I didn't see a hockey rink. I can't even honestly think of, of any tennis courts that I saw. No. Um, I don't, I don't know. Do you, do you feel inspired to create any music over your experience? Like, you know, no, how, how you journey, know like, had a, like, <laughs> Just a small town girl. Yeah. Like, you, is there any like you can? No. no nothing. I've no, not no been hit, very. No I've not been gone. very inspired by the virus. It's no. kind of. It's taken away the things that I do to get inspired. Inspi- inspired. You know, like I, I get, I write a lot of my when I write things. It has a lot to do with social shit. Right. And. Right. I don't have much social shit, you know? Like, I don't want to yeah. fucking bash my, like, three closest friends in a song or write <laughs> shit about them or something like that. My know. asshole friends! Yeah, like, I, I can't... Yeah. I can't observe I absurdity and then make art about yeah. it the same way that I... So, I it, it wasn't... Yeah, it wasn't a typical, like... You got you didn't get the entire experience. Let's put it that way. It was great. I love it so yeah. much that I want to go back. Yeah, you're going back to school. But so I yeah. I also and you know when people would say to me, Oh, it's so shitty that you're here. Well, it's so fucked up. And I was like, Hey, it was, it was fucked up where I was too. So Yeah. At least I'm I'm here while it's fucked totally. up. And they're like, Yeah, actually that that makes sense. So I'm gonna read the label. Read the oh, you got a label to read. An oatmeal stout brewed using a smorgasbord. Okay, I'm going to stop right there. Smorgasbord. I thought it was Borg. It's Borg. Does it say Borg it on that? It says B-O-R-D. No, that's not, that's not cool. Hmm. An oatmeal stout brewed using a smorgasbord Board. of malts, including both flaked and golden naked oats. Oh, okay. this is NSFW. <laughs> Chocolate malt and black... F- Black You're not to blur out the uh, preview picture on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Notes of coffee and dark chocolate blended seamlessly into a silky smooth body. Never has your oatmeal tasted this good. Ever. Ever. I uh not even when you're, I'm just, not even I'm if just, you're stoned. I'm just gonna come completely clean here. Like you just you ha- you have me at stout. Yeah, I've I've never I, I tasted am, a stout. I am stout. a stout guy. I've never it must be fucking easy beer to make. Maybe. Because I've never tasted one that sucked. It's easy. It might not be easy to make, but it's easy to please those who like it. Yeah, well, right? I just, I'm thinking like back through. Like I've, I've had so many sours I've hated. I've had so many IPAs yeah. I've hated and shitty so ales subjective. and fucking, you know, yeah, all the shit that sucks. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm thinking about like, I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to yeah. shit on any breweries no. on the Left know, Coast Leaf podcast. But I, but I know what but, you mean. I know what you mean. Yeah. This is not even the Left Coast Leaf podcast. I was going anymore. to. I was going to shit on an Alberta brewery if that makes it any better. But you tool know shed. What? I'm sure. No, no, not tool shed. <laughs> when we get here, um, no, it's oh, okay. it's not. It's not. Yeah, I'm sure. The thing is out there is I don't want to say a brewery that I don't like and then have other people that listen to this podcast that yeah, like we that do, brewery, We do have a bit of an Alberta following. Hear it and then think, oh, well, maybe these guys are full of shit if they don't like this place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, but you back to get... my original point. Yeah. Which was? I've, I've gone across a lot of different beers that I, I don't like. But I've just never tried a bad stout. I've never had a bad yeah, I feel, I feel I feel similar. Like, even just, like, you know, you go as corporate as possible. You get a Guinness. It's a fucking great beer. I've never drank a Guinness. What? Oh, man. 
I'm a, I'm a 56 year old white male. From okay, we're we're drinking Guinness tomorrow. And when I was when I was a teenager, <laughs> me and my buddy Brady, okay, me and 4, Brady, we were Guinness people. 4 p.m. Pacific time quarterfinals, Canada versus Czech Republic. Yeah, we're getting we're some, having a Guinness. We're getting cans, so you gotta can get I, a can. Can I chill it? Yeah, you, I uh, yes. I'm gonna, I don't, no, I'm gonna drink it the way God intended. No, no, God didn't intend anything that. The, Eng- the English did. <laughs> so the whole, the whole nation and operation is an abomination in the eyes of God. And the warm beer is the nail on the coffin. We're going to put the Guinness okay. in the fridge. I'm going to pop my Guinness cherry tomorrow. <laughs> wow. I can't I'm pop. I cannot believe that you've never had a Guinness. Nope. That blows my mind. That and actually... one of my children have actually had a Guinness at the Guinness factory. Mm-hmm. And I've never had a Guinness. Well, we drink out of Guinness mugs every day. I thought you'd have... Oh, those Guinness metal coffee mugs are sweet. Yeah, they're great. Yeah. And they're not... Yeah, they're not like free promo camping mugs that you get at liquor store. They're actually... They were bought mm-hmm. at the factory. It's true merch. And, yeah. And... Uh, yeah. Very nice mugs. You know what? Like that, that phoning of Troy was fun. And now that I have this new podcast recording device, which I'm not going to talk about pod uh zoom uh pod track p4 this is where all the magic happens it's that that's it it's like it's it's small it's anyway this is not a this is not a zoom commercial but i that's i can what she said I can, <laughs> <laughs> I can do more i can do more calling with people because it, it it does have a p- specific feature that makes phone call quality better which we you, you'll be able to hear with troy there and uh i think i want to like eventually involve more of our listeners into um call in type of situations. Well yeah, like you know, you'd be make it kind of like a like a radio show. More, exactly. You know? Exactly. Because you can call like you can call in on any format. Like we had a back when I th- You need a you need a Ross Doyle screening call. So <laughs> yeah, <bro. laughs> make sure that shit doesn't go well bring it back I, to sitcoms. I, I take it back to a particular uh game last year it might have been. I mean, maybe I'm going back. I'm mixing up my 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 fucked up Leaf games, <laughs> but it might have been the. It, it was a shit game. It was either the six one loss to Pittsburgh. That was the Uzo game. But then it was the David Ayers game, and I did open up the phone lines and I said, "People, give me your number. I'll call you back." I did about half a dozen calls. Oh, so the David Ayers game was only 10 months ago. I know. Just just to but, fuck but with did, your perception of but time I, here. But I did call a uh, Justin Royce, who's a very loyal listener to the podcast. I want to say he lives on the East Coast, Massachusetts-ish kind of area. But we connected just through Instagram uh, chat. or inst- It was Instagram uh, FaceTime, but we just used the audio feature. So yeah. there's there's a thousand ways you can actually... Engage people verbally on your podcast now or anything like that, and I think it's. I want to engage. I want to bring the people more into it. Yeah, right. I think that's super fun and it's a super way. And I don't want to say that this Canadian division is going to get a little bit boring because we're so desperate for hockey. We're so glad it's back, but like by game nine of Toronto Ottawa, what are Sean and I really going to talk about by then? I want to. I think I want to bring the people more. I want to yeah. bring our, our like we we started this fucking podcast. See the only the in, only problem with that though is that yeah. Sean's on the phone, right? <laughs> now now Sean's on. So you need you need two of these. Mm-hmm. No, there's a way to do it. There's a there's a way. There's a way. There's a way. I'll tell you after. Yeah, there is a way. Damn. But uh, stay tuned, folks. Yeah, stay tuned. For we have way. we do have the technology. But it is. Yeah, it's it's, it's an un, it's an unprecedented year. Uh, it's going to be a shortened season, like much like the lockout season. It's a sprint to the finish. Um, I would not be surprised if a team that nobody expected wins the Stanley Cup this year. I'm not going to say it's going to be Toronto. I wouldn't be surprised if it's Toronto. It might be the Atlanta be Thrashers. If it's Edmonton. It could. It, it could be the uh, Seattle Kraken, and they're not even in the fucking league yet. <laughs> like we don't. We just don't know. It might. It might just be fucking. The Mighty Ducks from the movie. That's just right. It could be Coach, Coach Bombay might get Coach of the Year this misfit year. Misfit kids. Yeah. 
bunch of you, you, you duct tape your goalie to the goalpost and you just <laughs> drop the puck and you go right. But, but my point, my point is, in hour two of the Joe Rogan uh, podcast with God. with uh, Jennifer Aniston. Um, <laughs> the, Are you saying that I'm Jennifer Aniston and you're Joe Rogan? <laughs> is that like we we're, we're, <clears throat> we're super pumped this is happening, <laughs> but we are gonna we're gonna get bored. This Canadian division is gonna get boring. We're gonna Sean and I are gonna have like actual. We're gonna have to actually have post production meetings <laughs> where like okay, like what the fuck can we talk about? They're playing Calgary for the eighth time, like. We've already trashed Matthew Kachuk and Johnny Goodrow like uh, <laughs> like seventeen ways to Sunday. Like, what are we going to talk about? And maybe we start bringing on some of our of our people who've helped help us build this this shitty little concept from from ground zero because we're 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 still nothings, but we're we're a little bit of something because we have we have awesome people that listen yeah. to our podcast and buy our merchandise and think our social media is funny and put up with my shitty fucking Twitter game, <laughs> <laughs> which is like the most, and I can say this cause I work in the field. It's like extremely schizophrenic, <laughs> right? Like so my, my, my Twitter game is, is I'm still, I haven't, it's three years in and I haven't found my way yet. I don't know, man. I think that's it. You saying that is like, if the alchemist was like, yeah, I'm a white guy, but I produce, a lot of rap music, so I can say the N word. Yeah, yeah, the Alchemist <laughs> I rules. I, don't, I, don't, I got to have them on my playlist. I don't know if you can I think say you that. put them on there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah, I listen to a lot of the Alchemist. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know. I was listening to some cool Keith earlier today. Cool Keith. And it's just it's. Remember that time last quarantine? <laughs> remember that COVID time when we listened to a complete Cool Keith album while playing crib, mm -hmm. and you taught me how to play. That's right. I think that was it. We're ready for the final, the piece final de la resistance. If you've made it this far, you win a toque. Absolutely, <laughs> shout us out. Yeah, <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Message anymore. us and say that you made it to the one hour fifteen minute mark of the podcast. Are, are we there? Yeah. Are we there? We're we gonna hit two hours. Yeah. So if, if, message us. Fuck it, you get a two. On principle alone, <laughs> yeah. we're going to two hours. I don't care if this beer takes us six seconds to drink. God. What do we got? And we got our two uh, yellow, our two, um, two more of our whistle boy mugs. These are, you know what? As much as I like these whistle boy mugs, they're they're an interesting format. A stubby seven ounce glass. They are, yeah. I I, I like cool. it. I think it's very cool. cool. Mm. You want to, you want the uh, Fuggles Wart and Warlock Keep Your Weird um, bottle opener, or 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 do you want the uh, the fake hockey stick Toronto Maple Leafs yeah. bottle opener? Let's do it. Do that one. We got a little bit of a uh, table feedback on the microphones here, but it's called ambiance. But like as we've stated, literally nobody's listening anymore except that. Oh, I, I'm not even gonna watch this. Fucking no, we're thing. not watching it this far. <laughs> If you're if you watch it this far, if, I, I like, message you. I can recommend some shows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah like you you could have you could have watched an entire season of Breaking Bad <laughs> by now. Just like no, those are, those are long episodes. <laughs> okay, you could have four watched, episodes of Fraser. You could have watched five episodes of Reba by now because they're only twenty two minutes. Yeah, with less commercials. Yeah, although the first season. You gotta grind through not to, to talk about Reva again. I think, but you gotta you gotta grind through the first season because it's bad. Like the season it? one of Reba is bad TV. Yeah. Season two, it's okay. Season three onwards, it's, it's a really acceptable series. This That's could, all, all, all I'll say about this, that. This could this could be the most in, indulgent piece of non art ever existing in the in the uh, universe. Yeah, this is this Wait, is. We've just, jumped. We've jumped the shark. We're just getting drunk now. We're just, now we're just getting drunk. We're just getting like, drunk like, we we do have a three quarters um, <laughs> bottle of. If we want to keep going, and we run out of beer, where's we do have this um, red velvet cupcake. Oh, yes. Before we Bailey's. started, before we started recording, we took a shot of the yeah. red velvet. We, we got some courage in a bottle. Full disclosure. 
Tell us about this beer, Rich. So. This is your German contribution. The Brook Festbach. Festbach. I should have got the the video camera with the remote so we could have like zoomed, zoomed in, in on that. Yeah. I saved five bucks. Whoa. <laughs> we just had a hockey puck fall off the neon sign. <laughs> Luckily, nobody was harmed. And you don't think that's where all of our glasses <laughs> are, but it didn't uh, didn't, it didn't hit break a glass. glass. Yeah, nice. Sweet. Tell us that's about good. your box. Yes. Festbach. It's a Christmas beer. Mm. Fest, you know, you get your fest Bach. I don't know what Bach means, but Bach is like a dark. It's a dark ale. amber. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, you got a Bach. I only know it. There's the Vancouver Island Brewery does this ice Bach yeah. kind of beer, and it's like a 12% Christmas beer. This is not 12%. This is like 6.8. 6. Like, 6.8 6. still. Um, Oh, I didn't know that. I don't know. I was drinking. That's a heavy beer. I drink a lot of these in Germany. <laughs> wow. Never once. No wonder you were drunk 7%. for three months. Yeah. No, that was the three dollar wine bottles. Is why I, I, was I would. Drunk for three you months. know, I'm I'm going to I'm going to abstain from bringing the color. I wanted to describe the coloring to people, but I want to. I was going to bring it back into like a healthcare example, but I'm not going to. <laughs> oh God. Okay, you, I don't even want to elaborate cheer, on cheer that. that. <laughs> Cheers. So yeah, it's nobody's, like it's a, to, to cap off my description. It's a it's a spiced kind of nice Christmassy beer. I can't even compare it to anything we've drank from Russell. No, it's just a completely it's very different, pleasant. It's really nice. Yeah. You know what sucks the most? No, not the most because millions millions of people have died. Jeff Bezos sucks the most. You know what sucks the most from my COVID experience is that I have another son is still in Germany that I haven't seen since August of 2019. But we had a vacation planned. In April. In April. And and the um, father of his girlfriend had us booked into a Belgian beer festival the biggest beer festival he was telling me all about that festival and we were doing we were going to spend a night in bruges which is one of my favorite movies in bruges. before we moved off to onto the um belgian beer festival and Fuck. and i am not feeling it at all ripped off by the um non-event because of everything else i feel very privileged to be in the position that i am in but Man, that would have been fucking fun. Yeah, man. Honestly, those I I I, I don't even really like Belgian beers before I went to Germany, but right. I was directed towards a few that really they opened my eyes to to what the whole concept of a Belgian beer is actually good for. Okay, to the point where now I can drink Belgian beers that I didn't like before. Right, and really really enjoy them. Okay. Usually, kind of make me feel sick. They were kind of like bloaty or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They're, they're hootie and the blowfish. Yeah, they're hootie and the blowfish. They're they're kind of like the blues travelers or something. like Oh, that. I, and, I like uh, the hook is my favorite song. The hook, the yeah, travelers. John Popper. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, also if you're if you're bored of this and on YouTube, which is almost inevitable if you're yeah. at this point, look up uh, blues travelers playing hook. At Howard Stern's birthday party. I hate Howard Whoa, Stern. Really? I got nothing good to say about Howard Stern. He was the reason we have that disgusting grabber by the pussy sound bite that's become mm. so infamous. Hmm. But um I think so. I think he was I think that was an interview on his show. No, okay. no, it was in the bus with uh oh, the you know, Access Hollywood he guy. He said to Howard Stern all that shit about how he wanted to how we wanted to do his daughter. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, that was Howard. So, anyways, all Howard Stern shit aside, the Blues Travelers played at his birthday party in the nineties yep. and played Hook and such a great life. Will you play my that, birthday man. party one day? Yeah. Okay. So one uh, thing I've noticed about the uh German beer labels versus our Canadian counterparts, they have um Best before dates on their beer. Oh shit! So this is uh, three nine twenty one, March 9th. Huh? March ninth, twenty one, and I believe this might be. Uh, where's the other one? It might be a um, a date where it was actually bottled. Um, thirteen twenty two, which is like one twenty two in the afternoon. Um, 
Maybe that's the date that they, that they have to be that precise on their best before wow. dates. But yeah, 1322. This is 1105. So German. Yeah, hey, right? What is the time that's, of day? That's so miracle. That's <laughs> so miracle. The funny miracle. thing is, you, like, I, can, I, I feel like I can say that because the people that I hung out with in Germany would have saw that and been like, that's so German. Like, they're so self-aware of their analness and pro- like focus, like, just completely to a fault focus on productivity. Yeah. Or, like, I always, I bring it back to this, and this is just, like, you are much more versed in the German situation now than I am, but when we were on our cruise in 2017, and we sat, every night we had the same dining room table yeah you had like the same waiter and yeah and and the same seating and beside us was this uh met this two ladies who were german traveling together and they were just so german they were they were just like like they were like they were just they fit the stereo they were very nice yeah the german people the the german people fall into their stereotype yeah yeah they they are and like Yeah. yeah like i i the craziest thing that would always happen to me, like always threw me off, is this Canadian guy. I was like, almost every single time I ask somebody, "Hey, how's it going?" Oh, I'm so tired. So tired? Yeah, uh, just something, you know. They'd be like, "Oh, it's fucking bad, man." Like, if you ask someone how it's going in Canada, like, oh yeah, pretty yeah, good. Pretty good. Yeah. If, how if, about you? Like, if they're going to kill themselves in 25 minutes, they'll say, "It's going." <laughs> yeah, I know, know? Like, right? Yeah. But like if you're wow, in Germany and somebody is feeling bad and you ask them how they're feeling, they'll tell you that they're feeling bad. It could be somebody I've That's it. <laughs> Our YouTube content just ended <laughs> as we filled up a fucking 16 gigabyte memory card. <laughs> <laughs> Memory card is full. Holy crap! That's gonna take sixteen hours to download. Well, let's just sign off. Let's not. Yeah, let's not I, think, any I think. Further. I think. You know, we've talked about the fast box, delicious Christmas Cheers. beer. Cheers! Thanks for listening this far. <laughs> if you did again, yeah, claim oh your god toque. Yeah, call us up. I uh, am e- direct message. I'm us. not expecting you, to you, give a you single. A toque. We're not giving a single toque away. Yeah, I got masks too. All right, go leaves. Go, <laughs> go leaves. Go.